You know, I am. Ah! Ah! Let's go. Give me what I want. Kick down the door. Drew, you are not doing this. What? Not nice. There's a giant hand. <laughs> you hear yourself. I made like 2,000 of these. I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Leafs lose embarrassing to garbage to the New York Islanders. And now for a quick read that was definitely not recorded before the game and I knew the Leafs were going to embarrass themselves. Hey, think you know which way it's going to go? Head over to Sports Interaction. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Want to bet? Head over to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn and download the app by clicking the QR code in the screen or scanning it. You know how you do it. But only if you're 19 plus. Please bet responsibly. I'm going to go watch the game. Go Leafs, go. They're going to win this one. Listen, there has been a notion that I've noticed permeating Leafs Nation that this team got worse after the trade deadline. I've seen it poking around and let's let's be honest. Let's let's have an honest assessment of this team. They've had a number of games whether they win or lose where they kind of get pumped. They get outshot, they get outchanced and sometimes they win like the Ottawa game. That was fun. Matt Murray was pretty good. They got some exciting goals even though they were outshot into oblivion. But in other games this happens and this is the worst, the worst that it has happened. Now, the notion that the Leafs are worse after the trade deadline bothers me. It bothers me. Number one, because I have ever been called a pessimist. What? What? Absolutely not! Because this team is clearly better after the trade deadline. Pierre Engvall was in this game. How many times did you notice him, really? If his name wasn't Pierre Engvall, if he wasn't a former Leaf, how many times would you have recognized him in this game? Exactly! How many times did you recognize him when he was a Leaf? There's a reason he was traded away from a contender! Allegedly. Alleged contender. They're top five. They're not a contender at all. Until they prove they are! But since the trade deadline, the reason I bring up Pierre Engvall is they have lost two players off the roster. Two. Pierre Engvall, who was a depth player who couldn't submit uh, to cement his spot in the lineup. And the other guy was Rasmus Sandin, who had a number of really good games in Washington, followed by a number of really bad ones, and for some reason, nobody talked about it. Who did they add? Sam Lafferty, who got his first goal as a Leaf in this game. Admittedly, he's still looking for his spot in the lineup. Sheldon, please stop the blender. Noel Achari! Oh, that dude's an instant fan favorite. Are you kidding me? Jake McCabe. For the most part, been pretty good. Put him on a pair with TJ Brody, who I don't see fan on the puck very often. Do you, TJ? There's a TJ who doesn't fan on the puck! And Ryan O'Reilly, who is obviously not in the lineup because he broke his finger. And of course, there's Luke Shen, who maybe should have ought to been in this game on account of the Islanders, ran the Leafs into the dirt. Here's the problem. What happened tonight would have happened before the trade deadline too. What happened tonight against the New York Islanders happened last year. And it happened the year before, and the year before, and the year before! Things got tough, and the team folded like a napkin! Oh, the Islanders play a boring game. The Islanders play exactly how it goes in the playoffs! How many times do we have to go through this? How many times do we have to go through this? How many times do we have to go through this? This is how it goes in the playoffs. Sometimes you give up a breakaway to Cal Clutterbuck. You would never do that in the regular season unless you're the Toronto Maple Leafs and it happens in the playoffs. That dude hung two on you, hung two on you. How dare you let Cal Clutterbuck hang two on you? This isn't the OHL, he's not on the Gens. He's on the New York Islanders and he is it, is he older than me? Let me check. You should not be allowing two goals from Cal Clutterbuck this late in his career. It shouldn't happen. He hadn't scored since January, the last time someone had a multi-goal game against the Leafs after going dozens and dozens of games without a goal. The Leafs acquired him. His name was Eric Gustafson. He was in this game. He might have been the turning point in this game when he was robbed by Ilya Sorokin. The Islanders play trap hockey. The Islanders play boring hockey. The Islanders are exactly the same type of team that this team has struggled against for over half a decade. And before Islanders fans get too big in their britches, no, not this team specifically. The Leafs have run your show in recent years. I don't know if you've noticed that. You just had one very good game. Congratulations. And you know what? You know what? This game brings the New York Islanders closer to a first round series against the Boston Bruins. And I tell you what, good. Good, because I don't like either of you. I hope that thing goes seven games and 16 overtimes and you take a giant piece out of each other. Why do I bother watching games on a Monday or Tuesday? I brought this up a few weeks ago.
ago, and I'm gonna keep bringing it up. Monday and Tuesday, <laughs> the second the going gets tough, this team folds. And what's weird is the big guys, like, didn't? Matthews has looked good recently, and it was 3-1 for the Islanders, and that was bad. And, oh my goodness, how are we going to come back against the Islanders? They don't allow anything, and it's either Sorokin, he doesn't allow anything. Matthews, the bucket, boom! Boom! Nailed it! And then what happened? And then what happened? Immediately after the Leafs pull within one, they stack up five on the Islanders' blue line. You can't do that! That's what the Islanders do! It's like hands across America! Like, everyone just holds trying to get across that with possession! Are you out of your mind? No, it's because you're not thinking and you're not paying attention. Yes, you gotta give the Islanders their due. Of course you gotta give them their due. 7-2? You gave up! What do the Islanders do? They force you into making mistakes and then they capitalize on them. The Leafs didn't even make them do that. They made unforced errors on top of the errors that the Islanders made them make. You knew exactly what they were gonna do and they did it to you with perfection. And at the end of the game, Noel Achari with Matt Martin, that, that was, that was, that was a phenomenon that I don't have a name for. Listen, Achari? Cookie? Oh, I hope that guy's a leaf. I hope that guy's a leaf for a long time. I hope he resigns here and I hope he stays here. But in that moment, he felt like a mercenary. He felt like a temporary guy. He felt a little bit how Nick Felino felt. And everyone looks back on Nick Felino like he was such a bum and he was such a bust and they gave up way too much for him. Forgetting that Nick Felino was exactly what the Leafs needed at the time and had his back not exploded, he would have gotten them through that series. He would have. And if Tavares was healthy, forget it, they win it in three. But I'm watching as it keeps going and like, the, the, the Leafs are getting run out of the building and Nylander gets locked down and, and, and there was a moment where he just looked up like, Duh. What do you mean? Do something! Scott Mayfield sticked a guy in the face on purpose. I think that might have actually been Achari. While he was down. While he was down on the ground, he sticked him in the face. Go watch. So when Achari took on Matt Martin, however bad that fight actually was at the end of the game, he felt like a mercenary in that he was looking at the Leafs as a guy who happened to be dressed as a Leaf. And he was like, have any of you ever seen this before? This is what you're supposed to do when you care! And maybe I shouldn't yell at the team this much because I don't know if caring would have been enough. Listen. We're talking about this team since the trade deadline. Are they better? Are they worse? There are some guys who have performed well. There are some guys who have performed worse. Can I tell you about the guy on the Toronto Maple Leafs who I'm most concerned about right now? Sheldon Keefe. Bunting Tavares Marner? Eh, that's kind of interesting. I'll take a gander at that. I'll see how it goes. McCabe and Lilligren? Eh, I like both those guys. Let's, we'll see how it goes. Oh, it didn't work. Ah, it's, it's okay. It was worth looking at. Kerfoot, Matthews, Yarn Croak! Yarn Croak! I, you know what? Matthews likes playing with Yarn Croak. Yarn Croak has looked good, but I was looking at that line like, Sheldon, this is actual torture right now. What are you doing to us? And then later in the game, he had the decency to change it up. It was Matthews with Lafferty and Kerfoot. What? Listen. As a, as a fan base, as a collective, we pick on Kerfoot too much, we pick on Hall too much. And the reason that I think we pick on those players, like, like I, think people, I, th I think people lose sight. Justin Hall's a good player. Kerfoot's a good player. Hall should not be taxed with the toughest defensive assignments on the team. He shouldn't be. He's where he should be. He's on the third pair, and he's fine. Kerfoot, he's fine. He's, he's great when you need a bottom six guy to throw on the ice and have nothing happen. He can run around and he can throw his little hits that don't really do anything, but they at least gum up the works a little bit and he can stick check and he can keep up with people and he can keep the puck down low in the zone when you need to kill a little bit of the clock. And every now and then he can provide a little bit of playmaking support. Like he's, he's not like an offensive black hole entirely. On the wing with Austin Matthews? Go to jail! And the last one, the last one, the point that bugged me the most, the Islanders need it more. The Islanders need these points more because if they don't get these points, they're gonna miss the playoffs. What's at stake for the Leafs? What's at stake for the Leafs? They have home ice advantage over Tampa right now. What's at stake for the Leafs? If they lose home ice advantage to Tampa, do you think their chances of beating Tampa are gonna go up or down? 
I think the answer's down! They had home ice against them last year and lost! I don't know if you remember! Oh, that stupid penalty. I got news for you! If the Leafs go to game seven again, who do you think's gonna be officiating the thing? It's gonna be Wes! And your best chance of winning in seven or even preventing it from getting to seven is home ice advantage. Nothing to play for! You haven't won a playoff series since 2004! And, and, uh, forget the 2004. Half of this team was barely alive when 2004 happened. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. The majority of the core, the most important parts of this team, were there for all six of those! Nothing to play for! They have their entire careers to play for! They have future contracts to play for! They have their legacies to play for! You have a Stanley Cup to play for! You're not gonna win every game. It's an 82 game season. They're not all gonna be works of art. They're not all gonna be Mona Lisa's. You got your show run in this one from a team that is probably gonna be one of the 16 teams that you're in a dog fight with and you haven't won a series since the friggin' Bush administration. The first one, I think. You don't put that game on at 7.30 and have the nerve to play like that. You got a dozen games left, a dirty dozen. You're gonna have wins. You're gonna have losses. This is the last hunk of crap for the rest of the season. You can't do that. You can't do that. No one does that to you. However you go about that is up to you, but no one does that to you. No one does that to anyone wearing this uniform. If they don't adopt that mindset, then I guess my last video of the season is gonna be eh, in about five weeks. I hope it's not. I hope it's not. I hope it's in the middle of June and I'm sweating buckets because I'm celebrating! That's what I hope. That's all I want. You don't get this loud if you don't care. I care. Sometimes I wish this team cared as much as we did. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all my friends, uh, your friends. Um, I was on Game Over Toronto. That's on the uh, SDPN website and uh, my head hurts.